All right, we are on lesson 3-6, algebra 2, factor by grouping. Today's date is Monday, October 12th, 2020. Our objective today is to do what? Gunner. There it is. All right, so if I have two apples and I have five apples, I can say I have how many apples? Nice and easy. I'm, I'm doing baby steps at this point. Charles? Seven apples, seven apples. And another way of saying that is I have two plus five of those apples. I'm gonna write apples because I'm lazy. Um, I don't want you to see how poor my art skills have developed over these past 27 years. Am I 27 years old? I think I'm 27. Um, I hope I'm not 23, that'd be really weird. Um, is everyone okay with this logic? I have two plus five apples because we're about to get really advanced from this one topic. Okay, instead of apples now, I'm going to say 3x plus 1 is my apples. So how many of these 3x minus 1 terms do I currently have? Jade. Close. Go for it again, Jade. No. <laughs> what? Seven. Seven. I have 2 plus 5 of those 3x plus one terms. I mean, the, the answer is seven, but I'll, I'll write it out like this. It's two plus five. Everyone sees where I'm coming from. I'm really factoring out the two. I'm factoring out the five. I say I have two plus five of those three x plus one terms. I'm counting how many times I'm seeing the apple. I have seven of those. I'm counting how many times I see the three x plus one. Well, I have seven of those as well. And then the penultimate step, the final step, that if you're um, in today's lesson, this is what we need. If I have 2x of these 3x plus 1 terms and another 5 of those 3x plus 1 terms, how many of these 3x plus 1 terms do we really have? And you have to think in terms of polynomial amounts. Charles? Close. It's not times. The operation here is plus. Yeah, so I'll write it in the correct order just so that people can see it a little bit easier. But you're 100% correct. It's 5 plus 2x. I have 2x plus 5 of these 3x plus 1 terms. It's really hard to wrap your brain around the first time you see it. Like, I've seen this now like five years in a row. Like, I've seen it in high school. I've seen it. You don't really use it in college. And then I've seen it every year since where I've had to teach factoring by grouping. So it's very familiar to me, and I'm trying to remember all the way back to when I was confused as you guys. It's a way of counting how many of these 3x plus 1 terms there are. It's building up from this, this basic idea. Give me a piece of five on how well you think you have your brain wrapped around that already. I'm, I'm expecting kind of lower numbers because I just showed this to you. I'm seeing threes, fours, fours, threes, threes, fours. Those are actually a lot higher than I was thinking. So. Let's test that though. So the whole point of today is not only to factor like this. Look, we factor, it's done, that's the answer. But how do we think about it in terms of this form? How do we get to this form? This form is a strategy. How do we even use that strategy? Yeah, Jade. Why three x plus one? I just randomly chose a polynomial. So that's not the same exact numbers that we're gonna use for every problem. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you'll have something here and something here that'll match up. These two have to match though, right? Because I'm counting that specific polynomial. Okay, so the hardest part about this project, this procedure, is number one, wisely making four groups. How do you wisely do that? It comes with experience. I'll try to show you examples and explain my thinking, but really this is gonna come from you trying over and over and failing over and over until you really get correct. There's not a good way of explaining this. Instead, it's just, Try it out, guys. Um, so that's step one. Step two, find a common group. So um, our common group in this case was our 3x plus 1. Um, and then you're going to factor out the numbers. So in this case, step number three is factoring out that 2x plus 5. And then you combine them into a factored form, which we actually did step three and four all in one step to say that that's 2x plus 5. I'll show you what I mean. Let's see example one. And I'll scroll to the top so that everyone in the back can see as well. I'm going to factor this polynomial with four terms. Every single time that you see something with four terms, 
Ninja Star and Advanced Ninja Star do not work. The only thing that will work is factory by group, unless there's somehow GCF and you can do some fancy things. But in, in this classroom, it's always going to be factor by group. So if you see four terms, it's something brand new that you haven't seen. Okay. So generally speaking, this is our procedure. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right here, and I'm going to look at two pieces. I'm going to look at the first piece and the last piece. So here we go. Draw my line. I'm going to look at the first piece. So ignore this negative three x plus nine. Maybe hold your thumb over it so I, I'm blocking it out. You look like a painter, right? Trying to measure things. I don't know if you guys have taken Miss Taylor's art class. If I'm only looking at 5x cubed minus 15x squared, what is the greatest common factor for those two terms? Again, 5x cubed plus or minus 15x squared. GCF. What is the greatest common factor? Andres. Five. Close. That's half of it. Five. Five. What's the smallest degree? Five. 5x squared, exactly. So 5x squared is the greatest common factor between these two terms, 5x cubed and negative 15x squared. I'm going to factor that out. And someone else, tell me what's left over. I have two terms in here. What's 5x cubed divided by 5x squared? What's left over? And this is just simple GCF factoring from here. Wyatt? What is GCF factoring? Just x, perfect. And what about the second term, Wyatt? Uh, Yeah, there it is. I'll pause here, but just to make sure we are waking up. I know it's Monday. You had a four-day weekend where you could forget all of your math. All I did was I looked at the first two terms, factored at the greatest common factor. What's left over is an x minus three. So far, so good. Are the questions up to this point? Okay, same procedure again. Let's look at the second half. I have this negative three x plus nine. What's the greatest common factor? Factor it out, Jenny. It is indeed three. So if I factor out a three, I'm left over with a? X, keep going. There it is, yeah, very nice. I see a bunch of hands that are very excited to tell me something. Jade. Ah, yeah, do you see that too, Jenny? A negative three X divided by three is just a, a negative X. Question, what, uh, what, go for it. Would that be a teacher error or two? Uh, uh, I purposely put it on there. It's, it's a student error, unfortunately. Okay. If it's something that I'm doing purely by myself, then it's a teacher error. All right, so we have factored the greatest common factor, which we, we tried being wise about the way that we chose these groups. They're not the same though. These two numbers, x minus three and x minus three, they should be the same, but they're not. You can make them the same. If you're a little bit clever. And I think this is the trick I was just showing to Charles today. Yeah. Okay, how do I do it, Charles? Teach us. Uh, you divide, you would uh, factor out a negative one. Add up the one. So it would be a. Other, so term on the right, you would factor out negative one, so it would be x. Minus three. Well, negative three. Yeah, we factor out a negative. It, it just switches the signs on the inside, right? I had a negative, now a positive. I had a positive, now it's a negative. I factored out a negative. Jade? Exactly, yeah. And that's always a, a great way of explaining uh, factoring. Factoring is the reverse of distributing. And we're allowed to factor out a negative if you want. Yeah, Andres. Would you only do that if the variable is negative? You only will do that if you need to somehow transform the second quantity into the first quantity. Oh. The only difference between x minus 3 and negative x plus 3 was that these two signs both need to be flipped. To flip them, I, or Charles, factored out the negative. Okay, and you guys are going to be using this trick roughly 50% of the time, maybe 25% of the time. I don't know exactly how many problems I'm going to have you do this, but you're going to be doing it, and you're probably going to be doing it on the quiz and test. Okay, so we've now chosen everything wisely. If I come back up here, um, we 
I guess step one and two kind of go together. We now have a common group. Our common group is this x minus three, x minus three. And we've already factored out, I guess I need to really redo this procedure. So who can count the number of x minus three terms that we have? So let me go ahead and write this down. I have how many of these, Chair, get out of the way. How many of these x minus three terms? Andres? Uh, 5x squared minus 3. 5x squared minus 3 of them. I essentially just take the first GCF and the second GCF and put those into its own binomial. So I can come over here and say I have 5x squared minus 3 of those x minus 3 common terms. And I'm done. That's, that's how you factor that. Yep. Take about. I will say this though. Sometimes. You'll have a GCF that was your very first step. We forgot to check that, of course, which means we might have another out here. And then another sometimes is maybe this could be factored more. Look, that's an x squared. What if there are three terms in here? That would be another ninja star. Maybe you'll have to do a ninja star after you do your, uh, your previous method. You might have a problem within a problem within a problem. You always have to check. Um, I can tell you that we're done here because five and three are co-prime. They're not perfect squares. Can't really go any further this time. So we box it. Then we move on to the next problem. That's the answer. We factored it. Yep. Example number two. Again, I have four terms. Four terms says, oh, can't use G or I can't use Ninja Star. Can't use advanced Ninja Star. Don't forget your first step, which we forgot to do in our last problem. What is always, always our first step? Someone new who has not said anything today. Sorry, why? Sorry, Charles. What is always, always your first step whenever you're factoring? Fernando. Yeah, do you know what the GCF is? Okay. You can call someone else. Uh, I think the GCF for all four terms. All four terms, yep. That'd just be two. Two, yep. Notice that we can't have any X in this because X can't be factored out of 16. There is no X. I can't factor out of four. Four goes into 16, four goes into 40, four goes into 12, four does not go into 30. Only two goes into 30. Okay, so if I factor out the two, why, can you do that for us? Uh, sure. Uh, two go into 30, 60 times, that'd be 16x cubed uh, minus 6x squared plus 20x minus 3. There it is. Okay. So our next step here, we're going to draw our bar. Yeah, always split up two terms. Question what? So... If possible, your first step is always to factor out the GCF from the entire problem and then you factor out from each side. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And I'll try to, I realize that the, my procedure is really outdated. This is the way that I used to do it and I'm doing it a new way that doesn't really match. It kind of does, but I need to go back and redo that for next year. Uh, Andres. So you can't factor out the GCF for like each side for your first step? You can't do it? Or? That's really your second step. Your first step is always GCF of your entire thing. So, like, if you do like GCF of thirty x three, that that same you know twelve x three, um, can you do like six? Like that's the GCF. Right? Um, like, I, uh, if the first, of the black and not the blue. Yeah, for the first two terms. Yes, you could do that, but you'll real and it's not an error. It just means you could factor it further in a later step because that one, when you factor out the six. I think it'll still be fine, actually. You'll probably still get the right answer. You just have to be careful about it. I can maybe, if I have time, see, what do we have? Do we have a backside of this? Uh, we have a lot of problems to go through. I don't know if I'll have time to show you the other way. I think both ways will still work, though. Okay, so next up, these first two terms, GCF, go. Who's got it? Who hasn't spoken today? I think Jose is the last person, right? Yeah, Jose, go for it. Yeah. 
Yep, so it's gonna be three X squared. And then what's left over when I factor that out? Perfect. And then again, all of these things are being multiplied together. So I have a two times that thing. And then really what I have is square brackets here. And I say uh, plus, and then I'll end my square brackets over here. Okay, second term, what do I factor out? 20X minus eight, GCF is what again? Um, wouldn't it be a negative 20X minus eight? So uh, can I factor out negative four? Um, are you saying that should be a negative 20x? I think that's a plus, right? Because it's, yeah, sorry, it, it was, I know I crossed it off, right? It was a plus and we didn't factor out any negative, so it should, it should still be a plus. Okay, then this is four. Okay. Four. four. Yep, and then what's left over? Uh, five x minus eight. There it is. Okay, we're, we're really, really close. Charles has a question. So after we figured this out, will it be whatever Exactly, yep. Yeah, everyone's in today. So uh, who wants to do the next step? Charles, go for it. So it would be four, well, three X, four you want to leave the two out because if you multiply back in, you're going backwards now. Oh, we're going forwards. We're trying to go backwards all the way. And then three X squared minus four. And then what's the second term? Five X minus two. Again, we're counting how many of these five X minus two terms do I have? Well, I have three X squared plus four of those five X minus two terms. And we're done. I have these three things that I multiply together. Two times three X plus four times five X minus two. Box it, done. And again, you always have to be careful. Maybe this three X squared plus four could be factored as two different things. Uh, in this case, we are done though. I hope I eventually give you an example where they can keep going, but I never do. Darn, that'll probably be a different day. Just to five up to this point, how well are you following example one and two? I'm seeing four is galore, a three, Fours, okay, so I would say their average there is like 3.95. Um, yeah, that's fine, let's do that. I think you guys are ready then. Try doing example three on your own. Good luck. All right, first step, what do I do? Quiet raise hand, help me out, Charles. Which is, and then after you factor out that GCF, you're left with thank you. All right, next step, Jade. Okay, and what is that? Perfect. Next step, someone else. Someone else. Someone aside from Charles and Jade. Andres. Okay. Three. Three. What's left over? Negative. That's negative. Yep, negative. Negative two one. Plus three. There it is. And we always have a plus in between here. It's always, always 100% of the time a plus, unless you decide to change it into a negative by factoring out that negative. Yeah, Charles. Why? It is, yeah. The 2i minus 3 term needs to be consistent. So there's our new problem. Thank you, Charles. 
And that was kind of a weird square bracket. And our final, final step, Wyatt. Uh, so keep the factor three on the half side. And then in the first parentheses, you're going to have y squared minus three. And in the second parentheses, you're going to have two y minus three. And that's the time. All right, so we'll box it. Thank you. And I wanted to show you guys an example on why this is a magic bullet. You might be saying, well, there's not four terms, Mr. Sindel. We don't really need to use it. And you're right. You could use Ninja Star on this. You could actually use Advanced Ninja Star on this. Question, Charles. Can you set the middle term in half? Yeah. Yes. Not exactly in half, though. You do separate it into two pieces. But how you choose those two, two pieces is the difficult part. It's the most difficult part. So I'll say this. If you have a problem with four terms and you need to factor by grouping this method that I'm teaching you, it's really easy. If I tell you you need to factor by grouping for something that has three terms, it's a lot more difficult because you don't know how to make four terms. You need to make this into four terms, which means this 19x somehow needs to be divided into two pieces. How do those two pieces need to be divided? And that's the, the really tricky question. Yeah, Charles. 100% of the time it's gonna be a middle term. Yeah, it has to be because the other, if you don't do the middle term, um, you're not really gonna have a, a GCF that has an X in it because you need to at least factor out an X here and here. So could you separate that one? But then you'd be factoring out an X squared term. Yeah, it always has to be the middle term. So again, the first step, always check if there's a GCF. In this case, the greatest common factor of those three terms is one, can't really factor anything out. So let me show you guys how I would divide this out. So I'll rewrite my 5x squared. I'll rewrite my plus 12. And there needs to be two terms that go in here that have an x in them. Something x plus something x. I'm going to choose it such that... That's a good way to try to explain this. Such that these two... <laughs> When I factor out the greatest common factor, I'm left with the same thing. I want this ratio between my first number and my second number. I want that ratio to be the same ratio as this number to this number. And yeah, it's, it's really difficult um, when you're first seeing it. So I'll show you. I chose 15 and four. I chose those numbers. They do add up to 19x. Check it out. 15 plus four, or 15x plus 4x. They do add up to 19x. You know all about it. Yeah, 15 plus 4 is 19x. But check this out. I divided it up in such a way that when I factor out the greatest common factor of those first two terms, and I factor out the greatest common factor of those second two terms, that the, the, the factor, I guess, the thing that I'm counting is the same. So greatest common factor here is 5x. When I factor out the 5x, I'm left with x plus 3. When I factor out uh, the greatest common factor of 4, there's a plus in here, I'm left with x plus 3. That's the trickiest bit. How do you get that set up correctly? And I'll let you try example 5 on your own because it's another one of those. And then I write my final answer of 5x plus 4 times x plus 3. And if I did advanced ninja star, I would have gotten the same answer. But you might notice, as long as you know how to do that middle trick, there's not a whole lot of math that's involved because you're not using advanced ninja star. And if I'm being perfectly honest, if you want to do advanced ninja star, that's where the, these two numbers come from, 15 and 4. I'll show you. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. You already did it. So you see exactly where the 15 and 4 came from then, don't you, Jade? So check this out. Advanced Ninja Star, it looks like this. We have the X, we have the needles on the side to reduce our fractions, right? Uh, we do five times 12, that's 60 in the top. We put 19 in the bottom. We say five X and five X in the top left, top right. And I ask myself, what two numbers multiply to 60 that also add to 19? And then you start going through those numbers. And <laughs> lo and behold, those two numbers, why are what? 15 and four, those, those numbers that we found over here. So the answer over here is 15 and four. And then you can reduce 
Exactly, yeah. So this 5x and 4 doesn't reduce. It's still this 5x and 4. So 5x and 4 is a weird x. This one does reduce to x over 3, which is where that x over 3 came from. So you guys have got like your, your first glimpse into why does the ninja star make sense? It, it's really factoring by grouping in just a, another wrapper, another form. So if I was trying to do all these problems as fast as possible and I was a master of all methods, I would almost always do factor by grouping. Even if I had something that was three terms, factor by grouping is just, it is that magic bullet. It always works. But sometimes they, they essentially require an advanced ninja star. So maybe you should have done advanced ninja star to begin with. I'm getting really good at doing advanced ninja stars in my head so I can start doing the middle terms like this and factor them out. So um, on the test, you will, I, I'll give you guys a heads up. Hopefully Sergio, uh, Josie, and Jessica are paying attention to the video. I am going to give you on the test a trinomial that I say do not use, or maybe I'll say instead of do not use ninja star, I'll say use factor by grouping to solve. And you guys will all try to do your ninja star and I'll be like, okay, I'll give you partial points, but I really want you to be able to use factor by grouping on trinomials. I know that the ninja star will work, but practice using it, uh, practice using this new method. No, no, you can use a ninja star off to the side, but you definitely need to show me the steps for factor by grouping. The ninja star definitely helps you with factor by grouping. So you guys try one on your own. Example five, it's another trinomial. There is a GCF to get you started, so be careful. There is step one. In the example four, there was no step one. We got to move on to step two. So factor up the greatest common factor of all three of those terms, and then try solving this using factoring by grouping. If you don't know how to split up those middle numbers, try your advanced ninja star. What do I do? Example number five, first step. Charles. Yep, which is? What's left over? Seven X minus six. All right, perfect. Next step. Is to divide up the middle number of negative seven X into two different numbers. Did anyone figure out what those two numbers are? Fernando? There it is. 3x squared minus 9x plus 2x minus 6. And again, uh, if you guys are curious on how we got negative 9 and positive 2, it comes from advanced ninja star. Um, which is saying what two numbers multiply to negative six times three, which is negative 18 and negative seven in the denominator. I have a three X and a three X here. The only two numbers that work are negative nine and positive two. Thank you, Fernando. And then I'm two steps away. Does anyone want to wrap up the problem for us? Andres? Uh, split, them in half. split them in half. What do you mean by that? Which terms? Oh, yeah, just looking at the left hand side? Yeah. Okay, and then what? Um, okay. Minus three, perfect. Should we let someone else do the next half or do you want to keep it going? Um, you can keep going, they're all busy. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll keep so for that one, it's going to be two. So just x minus three. All right, and then we have the same term, x minus three, x minus three. We're in good shape. Keep going then. Okay, and then um, final answer is going to be three. And then 3x plus 6. And then and the other one, 3x plus x minus 6. There's our final answer. Thank you, Andres. 
And that concludes the notes.